Hello, and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today, I'm going to show you how to paint this Gimli model. To start with, I primed the model black. I'm coming in with Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to paint all of the elven cloak that's on his back. So this is going to take a couple of coats to get a good solid cover. But just work your way around the model, all over the cloak, with a couple of layers of Mechanica Standard Grey, till we've got a solid base cover all over that elven cloak. And after a couple of coats, you can see we've got a good solid cover all over that elven cloak. So the next step, I'm gonna come in with some corn red. I'm gonna paint all of his clothing. So that's his tunic that he's wearing here, his legs and his gloves, and a bit on the top of his helmet as well. Once again, this is gonna take a couple of coats. Just take your time, work your way around, and pick out all of his clothing with a couple of coats of corn red. Be nice and careful when you get near to the cloak because you don't want to get any of the red over the grey we've already laid down. But just pick out all of the clothing with corn red. And after a couple of coats, you can see we've got a good solid base cover of red over all of that clothing. So now I'm going to come in with some Rhinox hide. I'm going to paint all of the straps and leather. He's got this belt here around his waist, which will be holding on a couple of axes on his sides. And I'm going to paint his boots as well. all of the leather painted so the next step I'm going to paint all of the metal so for that I'm coming in with some lead belcher I'm going to pick out everything we want to be metallic so it's the sides here to his axe got some chain mail around his tunic and this part of his helmet and the chain mail at the back of it as well. Just work your way around, pick out anything you want to be silver with some lead belcher. And after a couple of coats of lead belcher, we've got a nice solid cover on all of that metallic. So next I'm gonna paint any wood. So I'm coming with some dryad bark for this and it's just the handle to his axes. So he's got the one here in his two hands and he's got a couple hanging on his waist as well. So catch all of that with some dryad bark. Once that dryad bark has dried, he is starting to come together. So the next thing I'm gonna paint is his skin. It's only the little bit on his face so I'm coming in with some Bugman's Glow and in a couple of thin coats just going to catch all of that exposed skin on his face. And with his face painted up the next thing to paint will be his beard. So for that I'm coming in with Mournfang Brown. Just going to catch all of the hair that's on Gimli. I'll be careful with this when you're working around other colours, you don't want to get this onto anything we've painted so far. Just in a couple of coats, catch all of his beard and his braid coming down his back as well. And I'm 
has the beard painted, there's only one more base colour left to apply, and that's Retributor Armour to anything we want to be gold. So I'm painting the inner part of his axe here, his belt buckle, and any other trinkets that are on the model. He's also got some armour on the back of his gloves and his shoulder, so I'm catching those with Retributor Armour as well. And with that Retributor armor applied, that is all of the base colours applied to Gimli. So the next step is to shade. So I'm coming in first with some Reichland Flesh Shade and applying this to his skin. Be nice and neat, you don't want to come in too heavy with this. And next I'm coming in with Agrax Earth Shade. So I'm applying this to everything we painted gold as well as his beard. So just work your way around and pick out everything with some Agrax Earth Shade. And finally, known oil to everything else. This to all the fabric, all of the lead belcher, and everything else on the model. Coat all of that with a shade of known oil. If you're enjoying the video, please press like. If you want more videos, press the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. And once those shades have dried, you can see it's added some definition to Gimli. So now we start highlighting the model. I'm going to start off with his cloak. So I'm coming in with some Mechanica Standard Grey. Wherever the shade hasn't settled, put some of this grey. So where the known oil is in the recesses, come in on either side of it with Mechanica Standard Grey, leaving the known oil in the crevices to the cloak. By having your paint nice and thin here, you help build up for those transitions later on. Just work your way around and find wherever the shade hasn't settled and put a thin layer of Mechanica Standard Grey on all of the raised areas. that first colour applied, start to bring the cloak back up to colour. So now I'm coming in with some Dawnstone and Mechanica Standard Grey as a 50-50 mix. I'm applying this in the middle of all of those previous layers. So where we just put some Mechanica Standard Grey in the middle of those areas, I'm coming in with some of this mix and applying that. Once again, have this nice and thin and it will help build up to those transitions. Just work your way around. Wherever we applied that previous colour, in the middle of those areas, apply a little bit of this mix. With that mix applied, it's lightened up those raised areas even more. So now I'm coming in with just some pure Dawnstone and I'm applying this once again in the middle of those areas. So for this you want to be focusing on some of the more raised peaks and sharpest edges. Just applying a bit of Dawnstone onto those most raised areas. And 
now with the pure Dawnstone applied, you can see we have built up some tonal transition onto that cloak. So that's just one final edge highlight of Administratum Grey. So for this, it's just all of the sharpest folds. Put a very thin line of Administratum Grey on the peaks and an edge highlight around the edge of the cloak as well. So for this, just focus on all those most raised and sharpest areas and put a thin line of Administratum Grey. And that's the cloak highlighted. And you see it's added a really nice effect to that cloak and given it lots of interest and color. So now I'm coming in with some corn red. I'm gonna apply this onto his clothing, much like we did with the cloak. So on all of the raised areas, leaving the known oil in the recesses. To be nice and neat at this stage. Don't wanna get this over anywhere. We don't wanna be red. Just work your way around, wherever the shade didn't settle. Put some thinned corn red on all the raised areas. With that corn red applied to the clothing, the next step is I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of corn red and Mephiston red and placing this once again in the middle of those areas we just painted. Keep the paint nice and thin for this stage and just work your way around and in the middle of all those areas we applied corn red, put a little bit of this mix to help with that colour transition. with that mix applied it's added another layer of brightness to those areas of clothing so now I'm coming in with some pure Mephiston red and applying this on the tops of all of those folds and creases in the middle of where we had that previous mix by keeping each layer within the previous one it helped build that transition up to a brighter color And finally, I'm coming in with some Evil Sun Scarlet, doing an edge highlight around the edges of all the clothing and onto the sharpest folds as well. Be nice and neat and keep this nice and thin. This is just an edge highlight to pick out those sharpest points. So he's got this band here around the bottom of his tunic. So I'm highlighting the edge of that with some Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm adding some scratchy little marks into the middle of it as well to act like a pattern. And that is his tunic and clothing highlighted. So the next step we're going to move on to is his skin. So I'm coming in with some Cadian flesh tone and I'm putting this on the raised areas where that shade didn't settle before. So that's things like his nose, his cheeks and his lip as well. And be nice and neat with this stage, we're working with a very small area. But just catch those raised areas where the shade didn't settle with a little bit Cadian flesh tone. And that's the first stage of his skin highlighted. So now I'm coming in with some Kislev flesh. And I'm just going to apply this onto the most pronounced area. So it's the very tip of his nose, bit of lip you can see. 
and also the most pronounced areas of his cheeks. I'm just catching them with a little bit of his left flesh. And that's the skin brought up to colour. Next we're going to paint in his eyes. So for this I'm coming in with some black. I'm just going to put a little bit of this into the recess of his eye socket. Being nice and neat not to get this over anything else. in with some white I'm gonna put this in the middle of that black area we just applied and then finally with some black again I'm gonna add a vertical line through that white which will look like a pupil And that's the face painted up. So next I'm coming in with some Bane Blade Brown. And I'm going to highlight the wood. So for this I'm just finding the sharpest edge on the axe handle. And I'm just going to put an edge highlight of Bane Blade Brown. Next I'm going to highlight the leather, so I'm coming in with Rhinox Hide again and applying this on the raised areas where the known oil didn't settle. That first layer of Rhinox hide is applied. Next, I'm going to come in with a 50 50 mix of Rhinox hide and Gorthor brown and applying this on the raised areas, a sort of a chunky edge highlight, and in the middle of the Rhinox hide we just applied. Being a bit scratchy here with your painting, you give that impression of worn, beaten leather. Finally, to highlight the leather, I'm coming in with some Gorthor Brown and applying this as an edge highlight on all the sharpest areas of leather. So it's things like here, around the edge of the belt, just applying a thin line of Gorthor Brown and on the pronounced folds of the boot, I'm putting an edge highlight of Gorthor Brown as well. And that's the leather highlighted up. So the next thing we're going to highlight is his hair. For this I'm using Steel Legion Drab. And I'm just going to pick out all of the strands of his beard and the hair down his back that I can. To so be nice and neat with this stage. And just pick out some of the most pronounced strands of hair. With a little line of Steel Legion Drab. And with his beard and hair highlighted, the only thing left to highlight is the metal. So I'm coming in with Stormhost Silver. I'm going to highlight all of the silver areas with an edge highlight. Let's just work your way around. All of the sharpest edges, just apply a thin line of Stormhost Silver to all of the most sharpest edges of the metal. chain mail here I just put a scratchy little line at the bottom and pick out a few of the links just so that I like sparkling. And that's 
all of the silver highlighted. So the only thing left to highlight now is the gold. So for the gold, I'm coming in with Liberator Gold. And once again, just applying an edge highlight on all the sharpest edges of everything we painted gold. Just take your time, work your way around. And any pronounced edges, just put a thin edge highlight of Liberator Gold. That is Gimli finished. As you can see, it's a really nice, simple paint job to paint Gimli. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments down below, what's your favorite Middle Earth character? So thank you very much for watching and happy painting. <laughs>